Hey everyone, it's Brooke and I'm here today to do a requested book review video on Gold Fame Citrus by Claire Bay Watkins. You may remember earlier in 2015 I read her short story collection Battleborn and really liked it. So I went into this book expecting the kind of writing I got in Battleborn and spoiler alert did not get it. I did this as a buddy read with Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings, Elena from Elena Reads Books, and Brittany under the, from Under the Radar Books who had already read it but jumped in on our conversation. The story revolves around sort of an extreme drought in the southwestern United States. So the desert areas that are already really arid and dry, um, there's basically no water to be found whatsoever. And the people with means have moved into the parts of the country that still have water that are still green, leaving behind those who aren't as fortunate. We follow two people who have been left behind, so to speak. They are a couple named Ray and Luz who have sort of shacked up in an abandoned mansion in Los Angeles. It starts out sort of just setting the stage and building the world. We get a taste of Claire Bay Watkins and her language in this book, which was a little off-putting for me at first because I just, I had the Battleborn expectations. And this is so differently written. It's bizarre and coarse and dirty and just vulgar. And that took a little bit of getting used to, but once once I had settled into the rhythms of what she, of, of how she was writing the story, it grew on me a lot. And there was a lot of beauty, even if she was oftentimes writing about really gross things. Luz and Ray, uh, in, a, in an attempt to go and buy some black market blueberries, see this little toddler just barely able to walk who is being mistreated by a group of people and they essentially steal her thinking they could do a better job as her caregivers and the story sets off from there in that they want to find a better life for their new makeshift little family. I'm not going to go into spoilers more than that. That's the beginning of the book. That's where the story kind of sets off and lots of things happen after that. What I feel like you should know if you pick this book up is that you kind of have to be, hmm, Claire Bay Watkins just does not give a fuck about making you comfortable. She is going to gross you out. She's going to be vulgar. She's going to say things that are off-putting. The characters are not going to be likable. You're not going to connect with them. You're not going to understand their motivations half the time. You're just going to be really upset with them. Um, you're going to get frustrated. There's not going to be some big turnaround where everything is hunky-dory and lovely. It's, it's just never, never going to happen. Um, so you have to kind of be willing to go in knowing that. The first part of the story for me was the strongest. So the first the first book, I think there's like three, the first part. It was slow and character driven and world building and beautiful even in its vulgarity and I really enjoyed it quite a bit. But the second half feels almost like an entirely different book and it wasn't as good a book as the first part. So that was that was where my disappointment really lied. I mean, she it's it's like it was so slow in the beginning and then the second half is like this roller coaster of spoilery cliffhangers and plot driven madness very much sort of this furious mad max um sort of adventure action story and it was just so bizarrely different than the first part of the narrative that I was kind of taken out of the story. She gets a lot more experimental in the second part. Some of it works, some of it doesn't. She'll introduce things, little little sides of people who don't, it doesn't really make sense within the narrative. I still don't understand why they were included, so that didn't work very well. 
So it was just, it was, it was an up and down story, but you know, I think with a little more work or a little more attention, or a little more focus, especially on the themes she kind of presented in the first part, I think it could have been a really great book. Um, she talks a lot about, you know, I think immigration is a huge thing she's getting out here with the way that the kind of U.S.-Mexican border is almost encroached within the U.S. And so the people who have lived in this desert who are now, you know, can't afford to move out, um, there's border patrols set up keeping them out. They need papers to be able to cross the border. So there's a lot of dialogue going on there. Um, Les herself is half Mexican. There are are a lot of things being talked about about the environment of course and global warming and just the ways that um, these sorts of natural disasters could end up really changing the way we live life and kind of destroying our humanity and, and things of that nature there are themes of like the circle of life and um, there's lots of water imagery there's so much good that I that I hate that the second half let me down because I, I think that it was the beginnings of something really really great really special and then just kind of teetered off at the end unfortunately for me that was my opinion I wasn't alone in that opinion necessarily but I do know there are people who really do enjoy this book um, watch or check out Elena's channel I think she really had a very good time with this so, you know, different strokes for different folks. I still love Battleborn the most. That's what I would recommend if you want to check out her writing. It's it just it is more consistent and straightforward um, and very beautiful. Uh, so yeah, I just think it tried to do too much, and it started, it just it, it didn't work all the time. So. Those are my opinions on Gold Fame Citrus by Claire Bay Watkins, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!